My dual saw's not working properly. Despite my best attempts at overhauling the gearbox, it jumps out of gear. And that's driving me nuts. I've done my best to procrastinate. I figured if I waited long enough, it would fix itself. Unfortunately, although that's my favorite method of maintenance, once again, it failed. Luckily, I know exactly what the problem is, so I'll be able to fix it. Right now, I did a pretty long series of videos where I overhauled the gearbox on this dual saw, but unfortunately, it doesn't work that well. If I push too hard, the band falls off. The blade, I should say. And any time I take the pressure off my cart, it tends to fall out of gear. Like that. And I've removed the gear change mechanism because that wasn't holding it in gear. So at the moment I have to manually go in, put it back into gear, and then cut, keep cutting. As you can see, that was one single cut in 40 by 40 by 3 tubing. Normally it goes better than that. That was an exceptionally bad uh, example where it jumped out of gear constantly. And the problem with a tool like this is it's one of those tools where it works well enough to be faster than a hacksaw, but dysfunctional enough to drive you nuts using it. So it seems to come out of gear if I don't keep constant pressure on the blade. But if I put too much pressure on the blade, then sometimes the blade jumps off its wheels. So it's time I pull that gearbox back out because I'm pretty sure I know how to fix the jumping out of gear problems. The blade jumping off its wheels is a tracking problem. I need to work out how to adjust that. You know, I really don't like do-overs. If I don't like do-overs, I should have done the job properly the first time. This is a left-hand thread, isn't it? I remember last time I pulled that uh, pulley, I damaged a puller. Luckily I had the foresight requested this for Christmas. It's kind of cool that Dual's data plate's got so much information on it, including a specification for the belts. Of course, I can't just buy these specific belts here in Europe, so I went looking for equivalents. <laughs> Given that this machine's always been in Europe, I'm sure previous owners had no better chance of getting the proper ones. So this is the top belt I took out, B38. 17 by 965 millimeters long. This is the one that I bought based on that specification. So I'm assuming BX40 is slightly wider and it's also slightly longer. That longer belt's probably a good thing because I noticed that this spot here rubs on the top of the variator when in the maximum, I guess, high speed position. Now maximum high speed is not something I use very often, but I did notice that was getting some, some contact here. So I'm hoping with a longer belt that no longer occurs. But I guess the second way to look at it is if there are stop nuts here for the low position stop, then there's really no point having this much thread sticking out the end because it's never going to get to there and I could just shorten it to prevent that interference. Oh, whoops, I forgot to disconnect the shifter, which is in here, so that's holding it up. Okay, so what's actually wrong here? That's the high-speed mode. 
one to one. And that's low speed. I found I always needed to wiggle the output side a bit to get this to go all the way in. Okay, so it's good to see that it is easily changing gear. It's no jamming or anything, so that's all nice. It's just a shame that it's jumping out of gear. Now the first thing I want to check is for play in the intershaft bearing. This is the input shaft. It's supported with bearings on both sides of its pinion, but it then supports the back end of the output shaft. So there's only one bearing on this output shaft and this interstage bushing, which slogged out and was the original problem. So let's just put a clock on that output shaft just to see if there's any play now that it's uh, run in a little bit. Okay, so the play looks like it's probably about four one hundredths of a millimeter total. Being a plain bearing, it has to have some play and that's gonna be fine compared with the slop in this bearing, which I took out. Let's drain the oil out of it first so it doesn't make a big mess. You hate five spoked wheels. Maybe my crappy old puller will work better. The Gridfinity fanboys will probably rag on my lack of uh, drawer organization there. So have you all been watching the America's Cup? Surprisingly good start for New Zealand on day one. Two wins. Totally unexpected, I must say, because Ineos was so dominant in the Louis Vuitton Cup that I really wouldn't have picked two victories for New Zealand straight out of the gate. Yeah, don't miss out on these unique sport reporters. Hamish Bonder, an Olympic gold medalist to row. His combination with Eric Murray is legendary in rowing circles. He's also been a, a bronze medalist as a cyclist at the Commonwealth Games. He has the biggest motor I have seen in many, many years in professional sport. Well, the first impression is looking pretty good. This is the bottom down here. I'm not seeing any major buildup of swarf or anything. It's a bit black, but nothing looks like teeth being chewed up or anything. That's a good th good sign. So this is the original dual gear set. Nothing looks unusual there so far. I'll have to have a closer look once they're pulled apart. Everything's nice and oily. There's no rust. It looks like the pumping must have been working, or it, maybe it just got oiled when I flipped it upside down. Okay, let's strip it down further. Too short. Now during disassembly I'll have to actually have a look and see whether things like this are actually in the correct position. Spacer on the outside of the big gear, I hope that's in the correct position between gear and bearing. I think that's where it was before and I think that shiny mark 
shows that's what it, where it was originally, but you never really know, do you? This is my inter shaft bearing here, and it's feeling pretty good to be honest. There's very, very slight wobble. Most of the wobble you're seeing is in the housing. I do expect to see a bit of a wear pattern here on the shaft because it was only lightly polished after plasma nitriding, so it was still a little bit dull. Nothing you can feel with your fingernail. That's feeling pretty good. What does the inside of the bearing look like? And the bushing itself. This is an oil light bushing, so it should be able to take care of itself reasonably well. Yeah, there's a wee bit of scoring in there, but that may also just be from when I turned it to dimension. I'm not too worried about the interstage bearing at this point, which is lucky because this is the weak point of this gearbox design. So this shifts to select between the two gears. In that bottom position, it locks the input shaft to the output shaft, so one to one rotation. And that's those bottom drive dogs. Whereas these drive dogs here, drive the low speed through the skier. And when they engage, they engage on these surfaces here. Now my thought was that these aren't hooking into each other properly. But when I look at them, they really do look like they hook in nicely. And all three of them look pretty even. There has a pretty nice sort of back rake on it. I mean, the faces look like they've been reground, but I'm pretty sure that I didn't touch that side because I thought it had an adequate sort of engagement and hook on it. I did this side. So this is certainly a surface which I reground. And when you look at it, it's got a bit of a rounded foot to it, which is probably not ideal. The reason I got those rounded shoulders was because I didn't use a proper grinding disc. I used a cutoff disc. So in anticipation of having to do this again, I've bought a nice sort of knife edge grinding disc with a bit of dressing to get a nice sharp corner I can get right in there and get a nice, uh, nice flat edge on the thing. Okay, this is kind of what I expected. When I did this, I was in kind of a hurry, but I did manage to get it pretty much vertical. Let me just extract that as well. The matching part also has a very rounded foot to it. And when you put the two of them together, certainly doesn't give much confidence that that engages well. At least at the very bottom it definitely wants to push out. Well I guess that's so much for knowing exactly what the problem is. I guess I really have no clue what the problem is. My expectation was that I'd that both of these would look terrible and I'd need to go in and regrind these. Because this side has a negative rake on each part and kind of hooks into each other, I thought that that's the way it's supposed to be from the manufacturer. However, I got in contact with uh, Stefan up in Sweden who also has a similar dual to me with the same gearbox and he recently had his apart and he said that his have no back rake and just have basically vertical shoulders. Okay, so this result is really not what I expected. I expected this low gear to have a bad shoulder on it or something, which it really doesn't. So that's not the problem and there's no point getting in there and doing any grinding on those parts. I also didn't grind them last time. I can definitely have a go at cleaning up these ones a little. When I ground these last time on my Clarkson tool grinder, where I did, a, where I tried to put a bit of packing under my rotary table, I did a bit of a Rube Goldberg setup to try and put my uh, angle plate at an angle. Well, I don't think it worked that well. If I don't need that back rake, it would be a little bit easier to just bolt the thing straight down. Grind each of these faces completely vertical and put a little bit of an undercut under it. The second issue is, did I get the three of them done accurately enough that all three of them will carry some load? Last time I centered this using a dial indicator, I might actually turn up a bit of a alignment spud just to speed that process a little. What I'm not sure is whether I did the in-feed for grinding using the cross slide of the uh, tool grinder or through rotation. 
Now once it's set up perfectly with the disc on the absolute center line, I really should be grinding using rotation to ensure that I keep getting a perfect radial line through the center line. If I don't do that, if I do it this way, exaggerated, I'm going to end up with with shoulders that don't go through the center of rotation and therefore you just end up with two points of contact. Stefan's message was also helpful to direct me to consider the gear change lever as part of the gear latching. The way this uh, gear change lever is supported with a bushing on the casing of the machine on the outboard end and with a bracket on the gearbox on the inboard end means I can't really mock up the system and check the play until it's all completely installed. So the shifter mechanism is translated laterally by rotating this eccentric. Now, there's no real stops on the system. I'm wondering whether I maybe should put some stops. I have tried clamping this into the engaged location and there was enough slop in the system that it's still disengaged. There doesn't look to be any significant wear, wear down in the slot here. There's a bit of wear through here, but the actual driving force is by these balls. I mean, they are kind of loose in their slots. Maybe that's the problem. Just excessive play here in the in the driver. You can see that in the, in the past someone's tried staking those balls into position already. I would use a just a punch on both sides and go through and just upset that material and maybe retain them a little bit better. Also kind of thinking maybe a bracket modification to put more support on this end or even just a bushing just to restrain that play a little might also help. If I could support the bracket directly off the motor then I can also mock up the system and try out and see how it works before putting it all back in. Okay so it's only really in the edit that I've come to realize that I'm dealing with a completely different problem than I expected. So rather than the shoulders being the number one issue I think number one I need to address this wear and slop in the drive fork. Right. Both the balls, maybe I should also take a look at this this wear here. Maybe I need to remake this. I don't know, I need to have a look at doing something with this. Number two is looking at the slop in the selector arm. That's both here and some of it's outboard on the machine. A bit of a third issue is to straighten up those shoulders on the drive dogs. So I'm glad I now have a plan of attack. But anyway, before I start doing any grinding on this, I would appreciate your guys' feedback on what would you do? Is there anything I haven't thought of here which I need to address? Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'm now a little bit more confident of actually having a hopeful solution for this, and let's hope and get this uh, saw back working again properly.